Oh, hey there. Well, it's the holidays and I'm just hanging around the studio here, bending strings and skinning cats. I couldn't help but notice that my most watched video so far has been my Go Dance Session HT review. You might have watched it. It's a video in which I determine just how kick-assy this battle axe really is. Well, now I'm back with a sequel. Go Dance Session HT, even Sessioner. I had my Session HT modified and upgraded. We'll talk about that plus all the nerdy stuff coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Yukon Cornelius. If you haven't seen my original Go Dance Session HT review video yet, you can click right up here and watch it first. This is a follow-up video where I talk about my upgrades and how amazeballs this guitar now is. If that's possible. It is. It is possible. If you recall, I had purchased the Go Dance Session HT Bourbon Burst Strat type guitar. It has that beautiful stained wood semi-matte finish that looks dark until bright light hits it and then you can see impressive wood grain. It had the white pickguard and stock ceramic pickups. It was a good looking and good sounding guitar in its own right. Well, some of that has now changed. I have had it considerably upgraded and I've eliminated any negatives that I ever saw in this guitar. Behold, the birth of a new weapon. I give you the Nautilus. I had the white pickguard replaced with a Godin tortoise shell pickguard. I ordered it special, whatever that means. I also had the ceramic enclosed humbucker pickup replaced with that of a Tom Anderson H2 Plus Super Duper Alnico 5 humbucker. This is one of the best humbucker pickups ever made, in my opinion. And it sounds glorious. It's also one of the best humbuckers to split with a coil tap. It can become a single coil with just the pull of a tone knob. I also had both the neck and the middle pickups replaced with Fender Texas Specials and I ordered black pickup covers for them so that it blended with the theme of the guitar. I usually play 10 to 52 gauge, but the guitar came with the standard 10 to 46 gauge. So the tech had to file the nut a little and prep the neck and intonation to handle thicker top strings. I do not do my own work because I am the opposite of mechanically inclined. I am mechanically declined. I can do wiring, but that's where it stops for me. So I sent it out to my local Long and McQuaid where my friend Phil set me up with the work. And after two and a half weeks, I got it back. I have two things to say about that. One is that I completely forgot to order a black toggle switch knob, so I'm left with the white one. But now, I don't know. What should I do? What do you guys think? Should I keep the white one or order a black one? I, I could go either way on this. The white one is totally out of place now, but maybe that's a good thing. All right. The other thing I wanted to say was that the Nautilus suffered its first battle scars. There was an unfortunate accident when it was on the operating table undergoing surgery. Something happened where one of the Texas Special Singles decided he wasn't going to do this anymore and he was totally out of there. He was done with this. So it kicked up a big fuss, made a scene and trashed the place, but not before leaping out of the hands of the guitar tech and bouncing off the tail of the Nautilus. He left an indelible mark in my life, the tech's life and literally the guitar itself. So here's the damage. What do you guys think? Is it worth repairing? How would one even go about repairing that? Should I repair? Remember, I'm mechanically declined, but I want you guys to know that accidents happen. They just do. And Phil over at Long & McQuaid did a great job trying to make it up for me. He comped some awesome stuff for me and didn't charge me for any of the work. I'm in no way angry at them. They handled it like pros. The Nautilus will surely see far worse on the battlefield in the future and by my own hand, or feet. So how does it sound? Well, just before I handed the guitar over to get the work done, I recorded a snippet of a bluesy tune with the stock pickups. So I just grabbed my bass, plugged it in, uh, loaded up uh, SSD5 and made some generic drum track. And then I added some Hammond B3 organ in there. And then I did some, you know, playing around really uh, with the old pickups on the guitar. I used the Line 6 Pod Go through the USB into my iMac and I preserved the Pod Go preset so I could compare precisely. So this is the 
messy ditty I just recorded with the old stock, the neck pickup. Listen to this. And this is the same ditty with the Texas Special neck pickup. Exact same preset and settings. Well, time for some live tests. I'm going to go directly into my 90s all tube blue Voodoo 50 head and then into a 212 Buddha cab mic'd with a Shure SM57. I've got no special thing to play. I'm just going to noodle around and wing it, warts and all. Maybe I'll throw in some sparkle drive somewhere. All right, listen. All right, so this is the Texas Special neck pickup. It's going uh, through a tube amp into a 212 Buddha, which I've mic'd up with an SM57. And um, it's going through my Apollo Twin X, uh, and I loaded up a Neve 1084 preamp for it. And uh, that's it. So here's a clean tone with the Texas Specials in the neck position. <laughs> All right, here is the fourth position using the neck and the middle. So that is eh? a nice bite. All right, so here's the middle. Once again, uh, it's the Texas Specials. We haven't left them yet, so middle pickup. So now the H2 plus total humbucker. And now I'm going to coil tap it. So that's in the single coil mode. Mm. 
Okay, so this is the Tom Anderson H2 Plus. I've got the amp cranked with the gain. Let's go full humbucker. Alright, let's quail tap it. So now we're going single. So we're neck pickup, uh, Texas special. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going through a sparkle drive with a, just a little bit of dirt in there uh, and then into the amp on the clean channel. This is the Texas Special neck pickup sound. Fifth position. Here is the first position. This is just the Anderson H2 dirtied up. So that's the sound of the Nautilus, as you can hear. And uh, what do you think? It measures, oh, hold on a sec, let me just find my trusty old measuring tape. <laughs> you know, this measuring tape was manufactured in 1865 by a writer named Joe March. I picked it up in Massachusetts in uh, 1994. <laughs> wow. Eh? Wait, was I doing something? Anyway, so that's the perfected Godin Session HT. It's my absolute favorite guitar and the light of my life. It's the exact guitar I always wanted, and it's mine at long last. If you're deciding between a Fender player guitar or a Godin, as they're around the same price, I think you know what I would recommend. Oh yeah. I mean, come on. What serious guitarist doesn't upgrade pickups? I mean, we all do it. And these pickups were my personal choices. You could go with vintage Noiseless or Hot Rails or EMGs or anything you want, but the handcrafted, homegrown, farm-to-table Laurentian Wood Canadian-made beauty will always remain. I even had a chance to take it for a quick recording session with Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Old Jimmy and the gang were wicked impressed with it, as you can see. Uh, 
Sorry about the pixelated shot, it was taken in 1968 on a 2004 Motorola Razr. <sighs> we sure had a good time. I love Godin, and I'd love to test drive more of them. Well, that's going to do it for all of us here at Channel 4 News. I'm off to get my life-sustaining supplies. Cornmeal and gunpowder and ham hocks and guitar strings. Bye now. And transmission. Have you bloody ended it? Good. Good. Very good.